Hello and welcome to The Crime Reel. As announced in our last video, we should be uploading the stories of seven crimes over the next seven days. For most, the various holidays throughout the year are seen as days of celebration and relaxation, but the arrival of a holiday season does not signal the departure of crime. All of the crimes which we will be uploading this week took place on a significant holiday throughout the year. We start today with the case of Christian Gomez from New Year's Eve 2014. This case is shocking in its brutality and serves to shine a massive spotlight on the urgent and ever-growing requirement for comprehensive mental health care and support for individuals and families dealing with severe mental illness. Christian Jose Gomez was born on the 4th of February 1991. He was the middle of three children born to Maria Suarez Cazin, who was better known as Pia. He had a brother, Mario, who was four years older, and a sister, Maria, who was seven years younger than him. Christian was a happy and affectionate child, but by the age of 18 his behaviour began to change. He became ever more withdrawn, couldn't hold down a job, didn't want to learn to drive, and became increasingly isolated from his family. He would spend his time watching television, playing video games, and would sit outside for hours staring at the grass and the sky. He would often look up at the sky and say that he loved speaking to the stars and God. Around this time he stopped taking showers as he believed that his mum and sister were watching him through the television and he started to become increasingly paranoid. At night he would often hear voices coming from under his bed, flip over his mattress and would then spend the night sitting in the darkened living room of the family home. Law enforcement had contact with Christian on about 30 separate occasions, and he was arrested a handful of times on relatively minor charges, such as disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, loitering and prowling. However, he was never prosecuted. The situation with Christian's behaviour became so bad that his sister, Maria, could not be left alone with him after he exhibited inappropriate behaviour towards her. Pia hoped that her son would recover. She loved him and tried everything in her power to help him. She was desperate to get him the correct therapy and the right medication. Over the years he was seen by a string of mental health specialists, often being given different diagnoses, schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, psychotic behaviour, and with it a string of different medication. When the medication didn't work, it was either increased or changed, depending upon which specialist he was seeing at that time. In 2013, Christian was held for a mandatory mental evaluation, but this was only temporary. Pia wanted him to have 24-hour care, where he could be medicated, monitored, and kept safe but there was no such care available to him. Pia kept doing her best. She would take him to the psychiatrist and therapy appointments, buy his prescriptions, and monitor what pills he was taking. She would often need to leave work to drive him to sessions, and eventually began taking Christian to work with her when he could no longer be left home alone. This decision cost her her job. Unable to afford private health care, Pia battled on alone, Fearing for her safety, she began sleeping with a knife under her pillow. In the lead-up to 2015, tension was high in their three-bedroom home on Sheffield Court in Pinellas County, Tampa. Mario, who was now 27, had come to visit from Virginia. He and Christian were not close, and Christian believed that their mother favoured her older son. On the 30th of December, Christian's grandparents took him for his scheduled therapy appointment, during which it was decided that he needed yet another new psychiatrist. Also around this time, Christian, who had been refusing to take his medication, discovered that Pia had been crushing the pills into his food. He believed that she was trying to poison him. On New Year's Eve 2014, Mario, Christian, Maria and Pia gathered around the table for a dinner of corned beef, potatoes and cabbage. Once they had finished eating, 
Pia took Maria to her job at a Little Caesars restaurant, then returned and sat in her room, listening to some music. Meanwhile, Mario was reading a book, whilst Christian sat in front of him on the floor. Minutes later, Christian got up and asked Pia if she still wanted help moving the boxes. The pair then headed to the garage together. Shortly afterwards, Mario heard some banging noises, but thought nothing of it as he knew his mother and brother were moving things in the garage. When Mario finished reading about 20 minutes later, he noticed that the house was very quiet. He went to look for his brother and mother, but when he opened the garage door, he saw a puddle of blood and an axe leaning against the wall. Mario followed a trail of blood to the front door of the garage, went outside and saw his mother's headless body on the ground near the rubbish bins. At 7.22pm, Mario called the police and told them that his brother had killed their mother. The police arrived soon after and checked the house and garden. They found Pia's severed head in the rubbish bin. The police immediately set up a perimeter to search for Christian. A second 911 call was received just before 8pm that evening, reporting a suspicious looking person riding a bicycle near Driftwood Circle, which was three blocks from the crime scene. The police soon located this person and after a short chase, Christian was apprehended. When he was interviewed, he told the police how he had attacked his mother in the garage at their home, striking her several times with an axe until he severed her head before dragging her body out of the garage towards the rubbish bins. He tried to stuff Pia's body into the rubbish bin, but it wouldn't fit, so he left her body on the ground and placed her head in the bin. During the interview, he acknowledged that he knew what he had done was wrong and against the law. Christian was taken to Pinellas County Jail on a charge of first-degree murder. No bail was set. A judge found Christian incompetent to stand trial, and he was sent to a mental health facility until he could be reassessed. In July 2018, after spending three years in a state mental hospital receiving treatment, Christian, now 27, was declared competent to stand trial for his mother's murder. Facing a life sentence, he accepted a plea deal of 25 years in prison and 10 years probation. He was transferred to prison on the 19th of July 2018 and his current release date is listed as the 16th of July 2039. Christian's relatives were disturbed by this development. They felt as though the mental health system had let them down when Christian needed it the most, and now treatment for his mental health problems was being replaced by incarceration. Christian's uncle, Mario Suarez, said, He doesn't need to be in jail. He needs to be in a mental hospital. I wish that he could be sedated forever, and not hurt anybody else. Because what he did was crazy. Nobody kills their mom and takes her head. How could he be found competent after what he did? However, keeping Christian indefinitely in a state mental health hospital would come with its own dangers. To allow this to happen, Christian would have to be declared insane. Then, in the future, if doctors were ever to decide that he was no longer a danger, He could be set free without any conditions put upon his release. Prosecutor Richard Ripplinger, who brokered the plea deal, said that he would like to see a system where there is more confidence in our ability to keep someone in long-term care and know that the community is going to be protected. Sometimes we have to make compromises. We did what we thought was best all the way around. The state kept him in hospital long enough for the medicines to calm him down. Where he would once attack correction officials, Christian could now sit at a table without shackles and discuss the details of his plea deal. However, with his move into prison, it was feared that he would stop taking his medication and never complete the intensive treatment and recovery that he so desperately needed. This tragic case serves as a stark reminder of the devastating impact of severe mental illness when left untreated. Despite Pia's continuous efforts to get help for Christian, the mental health system failed to provide the necessary long-term treatment to help her son. Perhaps with better programs, funding and access to mental health provision, Pia's brutal death could have been avoided.
Whilst it was Christian who swung the axe, could it be argued that a broken system should be held to account for its role in Pia's brutal death? As always, I'd really like to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Please don't forget to join us at the same time tomorrow when I shall be uploading a narration of a heartbreaking case that took place on Valentine's Day. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and thank you very much for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye.